Hey guys, welcome back to RPO Restorations. You know, there's a lot that's been said about the 3800 series Buick V6. It was one of the smoothest, most reliable, and longest lasting engines to come out of the 80s and 90s. A lot has been said about the Series 1 and Series 2 versions and their supercharged variants. So today, I decided to talk about one of their ancestors. The first version to see both roller lifters and sequential port fuel injection. This version was featured in a few of the nicest cars that come out of the 80s. Today, we'll take a look at some of those cars and the engine that powered them. The Buick 3.8 liter Red Dot V6. The engine known as the Red Dot V6 for the Red Dot located on its valve cover first debuted in the 1984 model year under the hood of the A-body Buick Century and Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra. It displaced 3.8 liters or 231 cubic inches and was developed as a front wheel drive version of the Buick V6 that had been in service since 1975. These engines can trace their lineage all the way back to the Buick Fireball V6s of the 1960s, an engine design that was eventually sold to Kaiser Jeep and then bought back from American Motors so Buick could produce a V6 engine that could meet the emissions and fuel standards of the 1970s. Without going too much into the previous versions, just know that the design was changed several times throughout the 70s and 80s, and a lower decked, smaller version known as the LK9 engine, displacing 3 liters and producing 110 horsepower, was the first version to see service in the front wheel drive A bodies in 1982. Now on to the Red Dot. Debuting midway through the 1984 model year, the 3.8 liter front wheel drive Buick engine was made in two variants. The LG2 version, which had flat tappet lifters and was rated at 140 horsepower and 200 pound feet of torque, and the LG3 version, which had roller lifters and was initially rated at 125 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque when it debuted. The LG3 would see a major upgrade after two years of service when its fuel system would be upgraded to sequential port and it would lose its distributor in favor of a distributorless waste spark system. This helped boost its horsepower rating up to 150. It would also see a redesign of its mass airflow sensor for the 1987 model year, as the original version was trouble prone and caused a lot of drivability issues. If I'm not mistaken, I think this may have also been the engine that first saw the use of a mass airflow sensor in the first place, particularly for GM. Please let me know in the comments if I'm right. The Red Dot V6 would have a five year production run before it was phased out in the late 80s by the pre-Series 1 3800 engine. But during that time, it saw service in a rather interesting assortment of Buick, Oldsmobile, and Pontiac vehicles. This included some of the A, C, H, and E body cars at one time or another. Now, I'd like to take a look at a few of my favorites from the list. Let's start with the 1986 and 87 Buick LeSabre. The front wheel drive Buick LeSabre debuted for the 1986 model year on GM's C-body chassis, which it shared with the Oldsmobile Delta 88 and the coming in 1987 Pontiac Bonneville. In its first year, it was offered with a 3 liter V6 standard and the 3.8 was the upper engine option. By its second year, the 3 liter would be dropped and the 3.8 would become the only engine available for the LeSabre for 1987. 1987 would also be the last year for the Red Dot V6 and the LeSabre because in 1988 it would get the 3800. I always liked the look of these H-body LeSabres, especially in coupe form. There were two nice looking performance models Buick released during this time as well. In 1986, you could get a Grand National Package LeSabre. This featured a black exterior with gray interior and some pretty in interesting wheels amongst other upgrades. The powertrain was standard LeSabre, however, as in typical 80s GM fashion, this was just an appearance and handling package. The following year, in 1987, Buick would expand its T-type appearance package to the LeSabre. Now, I have to be honest, I absolutely love the Buick T-type cars. Not just the Turbo Regals, but the entire line. 
and I think the T-Type LeSabres are the best looking of all of them. They are one of my bucket list cars if I could just find one in good enough shape. They featured unique wheels, blacked out trim, a handling package, and a unique two-tone interior amongst other things. They were offered in four colors including black, red, white, and silver. To me, there's nothing better than a black LeSabre T-Type. The red dot could also be found under the hood of two of the more unique and technology heavy cars of this era, the e-body Buick Riviera and Oldsmobile Tornado. Both cars debuted for the 1986 model year with the red dot as the only available engine option. Each one was made significantly smaller than its previous version with the wheelbase being reduced from 114 inches in the 1985 model to 108 inches in 1986. The cars were also much shorter and lighter as well. With a transversely mounted front wheel drive setup, they didn't sell particularly well. I just think they were way too different from the previous generation they replaced. GM even added some length to each model starting in 1989 to help a little bit. I'll save the discussion on these for another video, but for now, let's take a quick look at each one, starting with the Oldsmobile Tornado. The fourth generation Tornado had a strong emphasis on 80s tech. And when I say that, I'm hoping you can picture what I mean. There were buttons everywhere, and it had the digital instrument panel and trip computer. GM also equipped it with hidden headlights and a horseshoe shifter, which I think was a really nice touch. In 1987, they added the Trofeo model, which featured a different front fascia, the FE3 suspension package, and a faux dual exhaust amongst other upgrades. Kind of mirroring the Tornado was the Buick Riviera. Also much smaller than the car it replaced and much different. This car was another one that tried to look ahead and embrace technology. You could actually say Buick had it right with the addition of its graphic control center, a color touchscreen that could control a multitude of vehicle functions. I for one hate the fact that every new car contains a touchscreen but I would definitely love to own one of these. By 1989, the Red Dot would leave the Tornado and Riviera and would be replaced by the 3800. Both cars would see a few inches added to their trunks around 1990. I'm guessing this was to try to win back those who owned a model from the previous generation and couldn't get on board with the smaller ones. During this era, the Red Dot would also see service in a few A bodies, the H-body Buick Electra, the Oldsmobile 98 and 88, but its run was limited to BOP cars. By the end of the 1988 model year, the Red Dot would disappear from dealer brochures as it was replaced by the pre-Series 1 3800. What do you guys think? Was it a good engine, just good enough for the time, or never good? Let us know in the comments section. And if you'd like to see a full video about the LeSabre, Toronado or Riviera, let me know and I'll try to put one together. Thanks for watching.